Welcome back to Gin Reviews from South Florida. Tonight, I'm going to open another one that came from the Tennessee collection. And this is Wolfier State Gin, made in Long Island, in Williamson, New York, uh, which I hear is on the island. And uh, this gin is made with grape. So it's another grape gin, and it's also pink. But it's not pink in the non-traditional sense or even the modern sense. It is pink because they use uh, the grape, uh, they use a, a certain grape that's red and then they use a rose and that what gives, that's what gives it the uh, pink color here, like a rosé. Because this is a winery that's there. Uh, they do grow their own juniper on the winery, which is cool, and I like that they use grapes, you know, on their winery to make a gin. That's also really cool. It's one of the vineyards that uh, caters more towards, you know, the, um, the Hamptons crowd, I guess. Uh, <laughs> it's uh, on the ritzier end. And so this here, I had purchased this in Tennessee and one of my, one of my many uh, liquor store runs and, and gin searching adventures and it was weird because uh, there was just one bottle of it and I felt like the guy that bought it probably bought it for himself <laughs> and but I, I, I couldn't stop talking about gin and so I bought it because this is one of those bottles that you would buy at the vineyard and it's expensive as hell it's like a $50 bottle but if you do see it out and about there that's that's amazing I just I don't know, I, I feel like it's one of those, yeah, like souvenir type things. You go for a tasting and then they, you know, they get you in. Uh, so, we're at 40%, which you know is standard here in America. Uh, let's see, the base is grapes, like I said. Um, they specifically use a rosé table wine. There are six botanicals used in this, which are juniper, of course, anise, fennel, coriander, cumin, and cardamom. So those are pretty basic, <laughs> pretty basic from their website. Winemaker Roman Roth earned his distilling degree in 1992 in Germany. And he had dreamt of making gin ever since. I like you, I like you so far. Knowing that we have the finest wines that can be used to distill, we had a fantastic foundation to make something extraordinary. We've been growing our own juniper berries since 1996, so making gin seemed the natural thing to do. With careful attention, we set out to painstakingly use the only best ingredients, and day by day, added to the blend to create a luxurious and pure gin. The winery famous for its Rosé, beautifully designed, of floral print bottles, and distilled and fermented their rosé wine. Okay, so that's how they, they went about this. That makes more sense. Then they infused it with juniper uh, and five botanicals and lime rind to make this barely blushing limited edition liqueur. It's a gin, no, not liqueur. That's wrong. The packaging, the packaging is uh, feminine. Again, another feminine note or nod to that whole thing. And yeah, I just, uh, I don't believe in it. So we're gonna pop this open no matter what, and we're gonna try it. Yeah, I don't, here's the top of the bottle. It's a little insignia of, what is it? Of their winery. It's on their website, on their stationery, on everything. It's pretty cool, I guess. So. We got a nice package here. I mean, for this looks like something like I said, like a, like it would come from the gift shop. <laughs> Let's hope it doesn't taste like it came from the gift shop and it came from an actual distillery. All right, that's a, a later. And still loves playing with these things. <laughs> All right. Well, there's a cork here, so you know the cork uh, thing we do. Right? Oh. but uh, I guess not too bad. It did sound like a wine <laughs> bottle, right? All right. I'm gonna pull that back a little. Got a feeling it'll get wet. 
And where did you get that? That's gin that's wasted. That's not good. Alright, let's see here. Let's see what Wolf Your Estate has done. Wow. It smells like wine. <laughs> like it smells like wine. But it does smell like there is liquor, like there's alcohol on the back of it, so. I definitely smell um, the juniper is there, which is great. But I also smell like this berry, wine berry, very sweet. Um, and it definitely has that smell of the uh, grape being the base, because, wow, look at the legs on that. The same thing with the uh, gervation, the, the one with my head. <laughs> the gervation one we did the other night. It's the same smell of that, of the, of the base. Hmm. It has, like I said, it has hints of wine, juniper, and maybe some spice in the background. Hmm. That's nothing spectacular. I don't really s Well, it's rosé wine, so, you know, it's not rose and water or rose and anything. It's rosé. Hmm. Some people, I think, they misspelled that on me. It's harsh. It's a, it's a, it's a burn, but it's not a good burn at all. This is not a straight gin. It's not a straight gin. Oh Lord. <laughs> Sorry. Man, I really didn't think it was gonna be this as harsh and brutal as this is, but it's, it's full of heat and bitterness, and it's oily a little bit. There's like a oil. Man, I was hoping for something nice with this too. You know, I'm not gonna give up on it. We're gonna try a GNT in it, and then if that doesn't work, we'll definitely try some cocktail. Well, to be honest here, I just went and cut up my fruit, and uh, there was a piece of grapefruit that was like extra, and uh, I ate it, and it actually made the gin taste that was little harsh and bitter in the back it like kind of sweetened it out it's very sweet grapefruit so I'm hoping that this does the same with the uh, tonic um, I'm using a wine glass since it's a wine gin you know? see if that uh, doesn't it won't but I want to try it cold I want to see maybe cold it's a little you never know Citrus does calm it down. Um, you know, I did have a similar thing happen with the St. Augustine gin that I did from here, from Florida. There was a bit of harshness on the back end that wasn't really captured until 
later on, and I'm, I'm getting the same harshness on this. The citrus is, is definitely mellowing that out, but it is there still. Mm. I'm getting more of that spice now. Uh, the anise, the licorice, the really hard spices, the earthy ones. Um, the juniper is definitely there. I said before, it's still like, it's a little too much. It's annoying. You know, it's not a, a bad, um, I see this like maybe like a gin fizz, something along those lines. And again, this is not something you would want to drink. I'm glad I, had, I got to do it for you guys. And if, I don't even know if they still even sell this one. I looked on the website and they have a, not the rosé one anymore. They use the Chardonnay now, so. But, you never know. I mean, I'm finding gins down here that are 20 years old. We will we'll be doing that one. 21 years old, actually. We'll be doing that one shortly. I'm saving that one. Might as well, right? It's already 21 years old. <laughs> yeah. If anyone has been to uh, Wolf Ear Estate, have any stories or anything, please leave them. I'd love to read it. I'd love to read your experience. I, I got a feeling it's better when you're at the uh, the winery. You know, they always they get you at the first when you walk in the door there. That's what they're doing to you. They're getting you a little liquored sauced up so you buy all the uh, higher end stuff. They know how ridiculous it is. <laughs> hmm. Well, I'm going to continue to enjoy this, uh, even though it's not the best. Uh, and I'll make some cocktails with it, and if something kind of comes to light out of it, we'll make a video of that. Put it, post it. All right, you have a good night, everyone out there and everywhere in the world. <laughs> uh, Talk you to the next one and all that good stuff. See you on the next one. And, uh, you know, get bastard and all that good stuff.